Wayne, part of the Overside team at Renew Church in Whangarei. And this is another life skill. I call this one the Eight Gate. Let's get into it. There were three crosses at Calvary. The middle one was for Barabbas, but Jesus took his place. Well, Barabbas means the son of the Father, and we're all sons of our Heavenly Father. The middle cross was for you, but Jesus took your place. God does not bypass sin, he executes it. You died on that middle cross, but the good news is that you were made alive again with Jesus. Romans 7.24 describes the struggle we all have. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. So how do we break free from being a slave to sin? The answer is in Romans 8, and it's what I call the eight gate. I encourage you to read through the whole chapter of Romans, but let's start here. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. You know about laws from science. For instance, the law of gravity stops you from floating off into space, never to be seen again. This law always works, but birds and planes seem to defy gravity. Planes can fly off the ground because there's another law at work that causes lift, and lift is stronger than the force of gravity. This is Bernoulli's principle and Newton's third law working together. A stronger law comes along and takes over. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ is stronger than the other law. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sin. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. For those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God. There are many references to this process in Scripture, but let's look at it another way in Paul's second letter to the Corinthian church. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is the eighth gate. The mind set on the flesh is death, and the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. This is not positive thinking. This is your mind inspired by the Holy Spirit, inviting him to rise up in us and put to death the things of the flesh. So how do you do this? Well, you take the word of God and you meditate on it. You speak it. For instance, greater is he who is in me, the Holy Spirit, than he who is in the world, the devil. Rise up in me, Holy Spirit. Flesh, Jesus, is greater than you. Or, if you like, you can start thanking him. Lord, I thank you that you live inside me and I thank you for my deliverance in the past. Thank you that you are now delivering me. Start thinking on the things of God and give the Holy Spirit something to work with. He'll rise up within you and give your life to your mortal body, to your earthly body. Listen to this as it continues in Romans 8. The eight gate. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. This is not talking about when you die and go to heaven. It says mortal body. Galatians puts it this way. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from his flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Like a gardener, you sow gorse, you get gorse. You sow strawberries, 
you get strawberries. And ask God for a revelation and think on it, speak on it, meditate on it, make sure that it rises up inside you. Give the Spirit something to work on and give you resurrection life. Think on your desires, your habits, your problems, your failings, all the bad things, your weaknesses. This is exactly what you'll get. Apply the eight gate to your life and watch God do miracles for you every day. You live in exciting times. Well, I'll see you next time with another life skill.